Good morning. Good morning. We are back online on Wednesdays. Who, who would have thought it um, even a couple of weeks ago? But here we are, and uh, we are maintaining, like we, like we said, our, our regular patterns of prayer and worship that we would normally do. And it feels important today because it's actually, as well as Armistice Day, we're wearing our poppies, um, we've got the silence at 11 o'clock, um, but it's important today because not only is it Armistice Day, it's also our patron saints day, St. Martin's Day. Um, now, I have done a little bit of homework about St. Martin, and he's basically most well known for splitting his cloak in two with his sword on the battlefield as he saw somebody who was basically dying of cold and exposure and, uh, and to keep them warm and to provide for them. So he's kind of a cool patron saint to have, I think, especially in these times where we're trying to look after each other. So yeah, St. Martin's Day today. This Wednesday worship is going to be a little bit different from what we did at the last lockdown. It's going to be a very simple, um, basic kind of informal morning prayer service. But in the middle will be a chance for Matt and I to (laughs) have a conversation. So those of you who know us will know that we're both verbal processors. We think out loud. Um, our supervisions, when we do our, when my supervisions, when we do our meetings on uh, every couple of Mondays, we uh, tend to go on a long time. We promise you'll see there's a counter. Eight isn't minutes. There? Eight minutes. We're not going to let it go on beyond that. We'll wrap up after eight minutes. Um, but the idea is that we've been thinking about scripture all year, online and in person here in the church. And it's, the, it's been the year of the Bible for us at St. Martin's here. And we want to just engage with that in new ways find different ways of doing it. And yes, you know, we love preaching, both of us. Um, It's one of our favorite things, but actually sometimes having a conversation with each other is a really interesting way of learning more about what God says in his word. Um, So that's what we just thought we'd do. While we kind of got a month where we couldn't do our normal thing on a Wednesday morning. It's totally bad. It's completely bonkers. Um, But we would really love you to join in that conversation. This is not going to be a fully formed talk. It'll be the beginning of something. We'll have to, we'll cut off after those eight minutes. So um, it'll only ever be the beginning. So carry on that conversation in the comments under this live post or with each other as you perhaps ring up each other, checking in on each other in the, while we're in lockdown. Use these little kind of points, these, these things we've been talking about as a way of starting a conversation about what God might be saying in our lives. Um, sometimes that's a conversation. The conversation is the best way of doing that, helping others um, discern what God's saying to them, and letting them help us discern what God's saying to us. So this is an experiment. Let us know what you think. We're always open to feedback, aren't we? We are. <laughs> and we'll go from there. But we're going to start first with just some words. So let's just still ourselves for a minute. We're going to still ourselves as well. We've had the inevitable little last minute technical hitches. So we're just gonna still ourselves too and, uh, and come to the Lord this morning. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as and the day, the day rises, rises to meet the sun. sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us us shout shout for for joy joy to the the rock rock of of our our salvation. salvation. And Matt's going to read our psalm today for St. Martin's Day, for Armistice Day. It's Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness 
and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Of God leading us through even the hardest times um, into quiet places where we can rest and be with him, where we can be restored. And we're going to use a version of that psalm to sing about that now. Do join us in your homes. The words will appear at the bottom of the screen. We're singing, uh, You Restore My Soul. I'm going to read now from the book of Revelation, today's New Testament reading. The uh, 
beautiful thing about being in the Church of England is that we have a lectionary, that's a, a, a set of readings every day. So we know that brothers and sisters in Christ around the whole of the world are reading the same reading today. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hand. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? Where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of their great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. <clears throat> Well, I do love this passage. I mean, one of the things about it that um, that I always think of is, uh, I, I think it's one of the moments in Revelation where it's really difficult to get Revelation on a timeline, where everything goes. People try and put it in a timeline, but it's just really difficult to do that. And I have a feeling, looking at Scripture, this is one of those kind of flashback moments. I don't know mm -hmm. if you see films when you see a flashback or a flash-forward moment almost. Yeah. What's going to happen in the future? I can't promise you this is completely 100%, but I just get a sense that uh, this is a flash-forward mm -hmm. picture. And um, uh, I always think of, um, you know when you get, a, uh, you get a school photograph? You get a school photograph, and um, let's be honest, you always end up looking for yourself in it of course, first. Of course. You, know, you always look, or wherever you are, like a big staff shot yeah. or something like that, there you look for yourself first. It's terrible, really. I kind of think that this this whole group is the whole group mm. of all of us. And I feel like I'm looking for my face in this, that I'm seeing my face. In that great crowd. In that great, great yeah. big crowd, okay. yeah. prepared and ready and, um, and washed and all those things mm. about the future for Christians that is so wonderful and beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I think we... Yeah, I mean, it's a struggle right now, isn't it? So mm. to, to have this sense of hope, it's amazing, isn't it? We've had Revelation. Revelation is now up to Christmas, really, essentially, on, on and off. We've had the Four Horsemen, by the way, twice in our personal readings. But and anyway. in the lectionary, yeah. Yes, those of you who are doing the Year of the Bible, then you, yes. <laughs> we, we, we're quite drenched in Revelation at the moment, <laughs> aren't we? And, uh, and uh, the sort of latter prophets, yes. Um, so, yeah. so, so there's quite a lot going on there. But, um, but I just think... You know, it, we need to have hope, don't we? We need to see this hope. And I mm. think there's a, one of these moments in Revelation where you just, it's like the clouds clearing. Yeah. And, um, and you, see, you see what's going on, really. Yeah, I think it's really lovely that it's not, it, it, it's really real, isn't it? It says at the end there, um, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And it's that thing of, you know, we're not going to, going to think about this on Sunday actually um, we, you know, we're not necessarily going to get a free pass to an easy life as Christians you know following Jesus doesn't give us an easy life often it's the it can be the opposite if we're really kind of up against it yeah. but actually this that hope at the end of it um, where you know you kind of dust yourself off and you can have you know it's like having gone through a really you know you do a, a run or a you know something really you know, you've moved house, I'm thinking of great tribulations, you move house, you know, the, all you want to do at the end of the day, once you've been up and out of the loft and, you know, moving boxes, is just have a shower, isn't it? And get, you know, and that actually just, yeah, 
that kind of comfort of just being clean and knowing that it's all good from now on mm. um, is just a lovely picture, especially at the moment with everything going on. Yeah, just looking at our clock, we're still we're doing, okay. Oh, we're doing all so, right. So um, one of the things as well I think people get nervous about with revelation is this mm. thing about blood. Mm. And um, it's because blood is a primary life force, particularly with Jewish people. Blood yeah. was life, you know, yeah. life is contained within blood. Mm. And so, um, you know, that was so important. And when people see images and thought, thought I mean, there's an there's a image in Revelation about the rider cov covered in blood. Jesus covered in blood as he goes into battle. And they were always a horrible image, Jesus. But mm. actually, he's going into battle covered in blood mm. already. Mm. So, in fact, he's all the things we've been thinking about, and especially about the lamb being slain, mm. that's the battle in the Revelation mm. that he kind of, this symbolic language talks about. Mm. And, um, yeah, so, so, so that sense of being washed and, particularly with the Jewish people, that background yes, and stuff, you yeah. know, from the Old Testament. These are really mm. important issues, symbols for them that may seem a little odd to us because mm -hmm. we don't think in that way. Mm. But what it's about is being made made clean, mm. um, as you say, um, and, and, and ready for whatever's next. And of course, mm. in Revelation, it's about being ready for the new creation. When yeah. We see heaven and earth come together and, mm. and those amazing moments, which is which are ahead for those who know and love Jesus. So Yeah. Yeah, I love the, um, this is maybe the cure of being naive, but I love this thing that everyone's holding palm branches and we go back to, you know, the last, you know, when, the, when Jesus was proclaimed as king on Palm Sunday, they were, you know, they lay cloaks and palm branches and wave and say Hosanna. But actually this, this, you know, that wasn't the real deal. We know that within a week they're shouting crucify. But here, this is the real deal. This is it. This is where everybody, elders, leaders, princes, paupers, everybody, goes, this is the king, this is who, this is the real thing. And I, I just, yeah, I just noticed that little echo back to, you know, what happened when it hadn't mm. quite got, you know, Jesus hadn't quite won the victory at that point, but he, by this time, yes, he has. he has, this is it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Great, well, we kind of are at two minutes. We, we could finish there. That seems like a nice place does, to stop. It? Jesus wins, wins the victory. What's not to love about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Continue the conversation, though. What does this passage, it's Revelation 7, 9 to 14. What does this passage say to you? Is it hopeful? Um, it's full of things about worship, which is interesting. We're talking about worship at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, continue the conversation. That's what this is all about. We're going to pray now. And again, we're gonna do this very relaxed, very informal. Feel free to add your own prayers in wherever you are. Um, as we pray for the world, we pray for our communities, our, our nation, our, ourselves, um, those we love, um, fully aware of the fact that Jesus has won the victory. Whatever else is going on, Jesus has won the victory and goes into battle for us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that we can see ourselves in that snapshot of the future, as Matt said in, in Revelation 7, that we are in that great multitude praising and worshipping, declaring you to be king. And we just ask that we would live lives that declare that, that proclaim that truth. Help us to understand what that looks like for each of us. Help us know what to do that tells your truth, that reveals your love, how to be, how to live. Lord, guide us and show us the way. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray that uh, this time when we, in this second lockdown, that we sense uh, difficulty and uh, 
the shadow um, that is spoken in Psalm 23, that we would be able to know that the Lord our shepherd is with us. Who is our, my shepherd? It's your shepherd. Father, we mm. would pray that you would, you would be so close to us mm. right now. Give us a sense of your hope and your, your future already mapped out before us. Lord mm. God, we, we thank you for that psalm. We just ask those words will just continue to resonate in our hearts and in our minds this day. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, we ask that you would guide us as your, your sheep, <laughs> as, the, as you are the shepherd, that you would guide us as this world wrestles with difficult things, not just the pandemic. But, um, and Lord, we thank you that progress seems to be made uh, on the vaccines, that we, that may be a reality very soon. Lord, we pray for those who are involved in rolling that out, that uh, that, that will be a, a an easy, a, a, a clear, straightforward process that those who need that vaccine most would get that quickly. Lord, we thank you for the extraordinary efforts that have gone into making that happen. And we pray for those who are still uh, fighting the spread of COVID. We ask that you would be with the doctors, the nurses, all the professionals, all the NHS staff, all those who are working so hard to try and stop the spread, those in public health, those in councils, but also those who are looking after those who have got the virus, who are ill, some of them really seriously so. So Lord, we do ask that you would be with all of those in that effort to, to bring this virus, bring this pandemic to an end. But Lord, guide us too while the, the rest of the world's events continue in spite of the pandemic. Lord, particularly we think of the, uh, the US presidential election. Lord, bring clarity to that situation. Bring justice and integrity. Let it wash over that whole process. May your truth be known and may your will be done in that place, Lord. Amen. Amen. So Father, we think about those who are unwell right now, those we, we regularly pray for on our notice sheets. But we want to lift particularly today, uh, mm -hmm. Connie. Yeah. Connie Reed, now having moved in her new care home. Lord, be with her. Be close to her right now. Oh, we pray for, for others who are struggling at this time. Pray for Pam and John Worsley, mm. again in another care home, not being able to see visitors. Oh, we pray for those who are unwell at this time. For Ruth Hunter, who's gone back into hospital. Lord, we pray for her this day. We pray for those who have lost a loved one right now, who are struggling with loss. Lord, be close. Be their shepherd this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we finish our prayers with the prayer that Jesus himself taught us? Our Father, Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we will be back at 11 o'clock on Facebook Live um, on Sunday. Uh,
we had a little foray into 10 to 11 last week because of it being Remembrance Sunday, but we're back as normal, 11 o'clock for our worship on Sunday morning. And we're continuing this series of worship in the word um, and looking at the book of Job. Um, and then we don't forget to, if you have children who want to be involved in some children's activities before our Facebook Live service on Sunday, 10.30, we have our Youth and Children Sundays, um, which is just a way of getting the children involved, um, uh, seeing each other, connecting with Kate and with Lisa. Um, and it's for anybody in that kind of children and youth age bracket. If you have a child who, who wasn't involved last week and didn't know about it, do get in touch with Kate Saxton, our children and families worker, or Lisa, our youth enabler, Lisa Clamp, and they will be able to give you the Zoom details. It's a Zoom uh, online meeting. Went really well last week. It was it? great. Yeah, it was 11 there last week, which is fantastic. So we'd love to have just as many. It's just a way of keeping in touch for our young people and our children as much as uh, we need to keep in touch too. So have a great rest of the week and we will see you on Sunday morning. I'm going to use this blessing that we've been we used in the last lockdown and we're going to continue using it in this lockdown um, as we finish. May the peace, peace of the Lord Christ go with us wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. See you on Sunday. Have a good week. Thank you.